Yeah. You mentioned Congressman Don Bacon of Nebraska, a Republican who won in a swing district, won by about 5,000 votes mm -hmm. in the last election. It's a place where it could go either way. That's a toss-up district. Here's what he had to say, again, a Republican from Nebraska, about the Trump indictment. Mm. Well, I think it's obvious what the president did was wrong. And we just got to be honest. I mean, to have thousands of secrets in your house, showing them to people that were not read in, and then giving back some of it, but saying you gave back all of it and lying about it. I just, there's no way to defend that. And I just think the emperor has no clothes. And if we need to have some Republicans stand up and say that, because come around after the primary, I guarantee you the other party is going to be saying this. Mm -hmm. And I think it will, will cost us the November election. So I just don't see it as a sham indictment. I think this is what he did. I think, assuming that all the allegations are true here, you, I don't think you can deny it. And I think we've got to stand on the truth, and I think, and that's how Republicans will win in the long run. I think what the people are probably fearful of the base, fearful of, uh, you know, President Trump attacking them. But I think in the end, if you, if you stand on the truth, you're going to win in the end. The yeah. difference between a, sing, a swing district so and a safely red district yeah. where you can say it's refreshing. about the Biden bribery recording. So let's bring in former U.S. Senator, now on NBC News and MSNBC political analyst, Claire McCaskill, former U.S. Attorney Joyce Vance. She's an MSNBC legal analyst and lecturer in law at Columbia Law School, Caroline Polisi. She's a federal criminal defense attorney. Good morning to you all. Claire, let's start with you and just get your reaction to the reaction from Republicans on Capitol Hill with Don Bacon, congressman in that swing district in the Nebraska Republican being an outlier in the House. Yeah, it's not surprising. You know, I watched Lindsey Graham over the weekend just shame himself on national television, uh, trying to equate what Hillary Clinton did and what Donald Trump did. And he he so knows better. Uh, and you all have covered this very well this morning about the differences between the cases. I think it's time we realize that Donald Trump is not running for president. He's running for pardon. I think it's time we realize that the Republicans are afraid of him and the base that supports him no matter what. I think it's also time to realize that the people of this country do not want this election to be about Donald Trump's behavior. And that's what's going to hurt him as much as these very serious, factually based charges. He cannot talk about the economy. He cannot talk about trade or foreign policy or health care costs or abortion or guns, because all he can talk about is, oh, poor me, I'm a victim. And people don't want to hear that for the next 18 months. They don't want to hear that. So the Republicans are not only handcuffed to a chronic liar and a fraudster and somebody who has no respect for the rule of law, they're handcuffed to a guy who will not campaign for president on the issues that people want to hear about. Uh, the Republicans are in trouble with this guy, and I don't know how they get away from it. 